Cam News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hello, everyone. Happy April Fool's Day and welcome to this edition of HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On today's edition of HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Sports highlights. We'll talk with Hopkinton resident Cheryl Melody Baskin about her new book release and let you know some of the upcoming events in town. But first, town clerk Connor Deegan filled us in with the upcoming annual town meeting. We're going to do a town meeting was uh, just pushed to the following Saturday. Yes. And we're going to so, start at 9 in the morning. So let's start us off fresh. What are <laughs> we doing? Okay. So currently, uh, it was originally going to be scheduled for the usual first Monday in May, which was going to be the third. But because of the concerns around COVID and how much it's going to be to, you know, keep a spot lit and heated for a long period of time throughout the week, we decided it'd be far more prudent to do similar to what we did last year, outside, start early, and try to get it all done in one day if possible. So we're going to do it on Saturday the 8th, 8th of May, uh, so that we can, and we're going to start at 9 o'clock. Uh, so I urge folks to get there a little bit earlier, just in case we're going to do it at the football field behind the middle school this time around. Uh, okay. but we're still going to be able to park in the water tower lot and then we'll go down the access route for how people will walk there. And if anyone has an issue where they can't walk, we'll have the ability to, or, you know, someone can't walk that far or doesn't feel like safe walking that far. We do have, uh, a few golf carts and things like that. that will be ferrying folks down. Oh, that's outstanding. So unlike the quick town meeting that we had to have just to get the business out of the way, this is going to be your regular town meeting. This is all the articles that we didn't have last year and the articles this year. So it's, it's, it's going to be a full day. And, uh, and having it on a Saturday does allow you to have it on a Sunday if you don't finish on Saturday, right? That's true. I, I We can definitely do that. There has been not much interest in going over to Mother's Day the next day, though. Really? I can't understand yeah. why. <laughs> uh, I, I've had a, a few uh, mothers who are either on boards or working in the building who have said, don't you dare do this to us. So we're not, this is the one day. <laughs> but so um, I, I, have a, I have a funny feeling that uh, a select board chair will stand up right away with the special instructions we go until it's done. <laughs> you know, I think that's going to be our best bet. I think going until it's done for this time is, and granted, we managed to, I think it being a Saturday and people wanting to get through certain things a little bit faster is what helped with the last one for us sure. to be able to get through. And we were done before noon, right. which was awesome. Now, granted, you add bylaws and stuff into that, it's going to be a bit longer, but I think that we can definitely get through it much more quickly than a normal town meeting. I feel, feel like, you know, it's not going to be uh, the same type of situation where in a normal town meeting, everyone, at least most of the people, normal town meeting, they have had their dinner. They are coming in. They're ready to sit there and they're ready to stay there until 11 o'clock or whenever, but, uh, and then keep going after set for subsequent nights. But I think on a Saturday, I think people will be more interested in once we hit, the point where we've been saying the same thing over and over getting that question moved along to an actual vote and kind of just keeping everything flowing right oh that's that's a great idea do you think uh you know i mean you you've heard all the talk afterwards all the all your debriefing after the last meeting that you did do you think people are gonna like the idea maybe the town would adopt a saturday town meeting like most towns do uh, so i know 
not there's a big, big variety of towns doing one or the other i'm not sure if it would be something that we would end up looking at adopting permanently i mean it could be something we review but i know the the typical big concern around uh, or argument for trying to do saturday meetings in a normal time period would just be oh you get more people to come but that's also not necessarily the case typically what i've heard from other towns that do it is you get different demographics who come you're right um but you tend to get the same number of people mm -hmm. so you know I, I don't really know what the best option is at this point i think i've seen towns do both and say exactly that they get different demographics and some people like have uh, practice and stuff like that on Saturdays and they can't show up for town meetings. They need to do stuff with the kids or, uh, and so you, it's surprising how many people you think you're trying to help with getting on a Saturday, but really for this, it's, it's just a safety on the mind, health and safety. Hopkinton native Cheryl Melody Baskin recently released a new book. She sat down to talk with us about her new release. Hello, everybody. Tom Nappy here, and we are joined by Cheryl Melody Baskin, known to many as Melody. How are you? I'm fine. Waiting the pandemic out. <laughs> Just like everybody else. Yeah. I understand that uh, you have a new book out. Um, can you tell us about your new book? And you're also uh, from Hopkinton as well, correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah, I... Um... I, I wrote Peace Dreamer, A Journey of Hope in Bad Times and Good. Wrote it during the pandemic. It um, helped to keep me grounded and sane. And uh, it helped me find tools to use to, you know, keep me grounded and to share them with everybody. And also to offer hope in the middle of all this. So somehow I went on some kind of spiritual journey as I wrote this. I didn't expect to write a book, another book. This is my fourth. Um, but uh, it really, because there was so much division, or there is still um, in the United States, racial division, political, social, and because of the pandemic, I was a mess along with everybody else. Um, lots of anxiety and everything. But somehow I was able to find a new meaning um, of what peace is and what love is um, as I was going through all this. And how can we find common ground between all of us, even if we don't agree with each other and, and things like that. And um, also, like I said, I used healing techniques to help me, you know, go back to my breath, to meditate. Um, you know, there's just so many things we can do. So one of the things I love to do is just help people. And while I help them, I'm helping myself, remind myself of, you know, how to keep myself together and how to stay present and all those good things. That's terrific. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background in writing? Is this your first book or have you written other books before? Yeah, this is my fourth book. And uh, much to my own surprise, I have them all here. Can I show them? Absolutely. All right. So my first book was written in 2016, Shift of Heart, Paths to Healing and Love. Um, I'm a musician um, and have been a musician for years and an educator. But something I've also loved to write. And uh, something happened in 2016 where I just heard an inner voice saying, you know, you've got some stuff to say, so why don't you you know, write an inspirational book that can um, motivate people and help them and give them some some techniques and tools. Um, so I wrote that, and as a result, I also created a Facebook community with the same name, Shift of Heart. I've got about a thousand people from around the world on it right now, and the whole purpose is to really live the, the meaning of this book, to support each other, to accept each other, to trying not to judge each other and, and that kind of thing. And um, so that was a great outcome of this little book. And so in 2019, I wrote Heart Dreamer, Stepping into Life, Love, Creativity, and Dreams, No Matter What. 
And that no matter what, of course, is the most important part of the title. You know, we can't let anything anybody says or any of our inner talk stop us from going for our dreams. And if we, um, I've always been a dreamer since I was a little kid, but not everybody is like that. And so it's also a book to encourage people to tap into that part of themselves. A lot of times the very things we like to do when we were kids, um, if we do them now, um, we find that we're our happiest. So um, this book is just packed full of all kinds of inspiration and tools um, for getting back to the truth of who you really are. So then I wrote a play for kids. Peace Begins With You and Me. But I haven't had a chance to get it going in the schools because guess when I published it? <laughs> right before the closed. pandemic, I'm assuming. <laughs> Just when I it was right when we were told we had to stay home. So, um, but it's kids will be in it and uh, adults will be in it and, and all that. So that's three books. And then during the pandemic, I wrote Peace Dreamer, A Journey of Hope in Bad Times and Good. I just felt like that was a message I really needed to get out, that we've always got to keep hope no matter how messy life gets. That's terrific. Um, would you happen to have a certain line that you'd like to read for us? Sure. Uh, I will uh, be happy to. I'll just read the first paragraph, the preface, um, so you'll get an idea of the core of where this came from. Dear friend, thank you for inviting Peace Dream home and heart. My book of hope was written from the part of my soul that believes in the goodness of people and our ability to change, heal, and grow. I have faith that we have the power to find common ground amid adversity, shift from fear to love, and embody the core values of kindness, compassion, empathy, and respect. I will always envision the possibility of living in a world of peace, diversity, celebration, and love, no matter what. So. That's terrific. Sounds like a nice book to uh, put a smile on people's faces. Yeah. And um, it's loaded with, it's, it's a spiritual book, but it's also a very grounding book because it's just loaded with um, things that we can do when we, you know, on our good days and on our bad days, uh, things that we can um, turn to, healing, healing techniques. So, you know, user-friendly, quick things. That's terrific. Uh, where can people purchase this book or find more information about the book or find more information about you? Oh, um, let's see. My website is CherylMelly.com. And this book can be found on Amazon. It's in paperback. It's now uh, Kindle. And uh, right now I'm offering three free um, paperbacks signed uh, on Goodreads. So there's a contest going on until April 20th. Um, and then internationally, it's being sold um, by Ingram Spark. So anyone anywhere can go into a bookstore and ask for this, and um, the distributor will get it through Ingram Spark. But basically, it's on Amazon. And um, I miss not being able to do a book presentation at the library. I did a, a did a wonderful, um, enjoyed it so much doing Heart Dreamer at the Hopkinton Library, and. Um, one of these days that'll happen again. I'm trying to figure out if I want to do a Zoom presentation or just wait till I can be somewhere in person, you know? Well, hopefully soon enough, we'll all be able to be together in person. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Cheryl, we want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us about your new book. And um, thank you for having me. Yeah, we'll certainly uh, have you back mm -hmm. in the future. Keep us informed of everything uh, going on. And uh, be sure to check out the website, folks. Uh, some great reads on there. And uh, Cheryl, thanks so much. My pleasure. Thanks for caring and interviewing me. I appreciate it. We are going to take a quick time out on this edition of HCAM News. Coming up next, we'll have the latest in Hiller Sports, some of the upcoming events in town, plus a whole lot more. Stick around.
HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. You know, Dick and Rick Hoyt in the town of Hopkinton had a, a real and heartfelt connection uh, that started years and years ago and it's uh, persisted right to this this very moment um, and to have the sculpture uh, in front of center school which honors team Hoyt uh, is, is going to be even more memorable now uh, with the passing of Dick to me besides the athletic accomplishments of Dick Hoyt the most powerful example that they set forth is the, the strong and, and, and bonding relationship between our father and son. That's really what unconditional love is all about. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller's JV football recently took on Ashland. They were looking for their second straight win. Here's a look at what happened, plus the latest in Hiller's swimming and girls volleyball. On Monday, March 29th, Hillers JV football met up with Ashland. The Hillers, on their first drive of the game, started at the Ashland 30, but drove up the field. Set this time, he had Lee Lynette to his right, and an up back, and he'll go to the up back, and that is going to be taken into the end zone for a touchdown. Joseph Carazza with the touchdown for the Hillers, and they are up. Six to nothing, an 18-yard touchdown run. A Joseph Carazza touchdown makes it a six to nothing game, and the Hillers follow up with a two-point conversion attempt. Stevens out of the gun, and he'll go once again to Carazza, who will bounce off tackle, and did he get in? Yes, he did. It's an eight nothing lead for the Hillers. So the two-point conversion is good. Eight to nothing is how the score would stay until the second quarter. Start of the second quarter, Ashland with the ball. Up out of the gun. Back to the quarterback's left. He'll throw it and it's intercepted and it's gonna be taken up the far side. And with the interception, it is Paul Lisher, the sophomore. Interception, Paul Lisher and the Hillers get the ball all the way at about the Ashland three. First play of the drive, Joe Carazza gets the job done. And it is going to be a run into the end zone. Easy touchdown there after the interception for the Hillers. The conversion was unsuccessful. The score remained 14 to nothing Hillers. Hopkinton driving again towards the end of the second quarter. That will certainly be pretty confusing for the defense to keep track of. Out of the gun with Flanagan to his left. He's going to take it himself. Has all kinds of room up the middle towards the end zone. Out of the gun he goes. Back to his left. Three receivers to his left. He'll hand it off. Run up the middle. And with these into the end zone. Owen Flanagan for the Hillers touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run by Owen Flanagan makes it a 20 to nothing Hillers lead, and that's how it stayed until the halftime break. Third quarter, Ashland found the end zone. Lined up to either side. Takes the snap, airs it out to his right, and it's caught! And that is going to be a 35-yard touchdown pass for Ashland. A 35-yard touchdown pass. They followed up with a two-point conversion to make it a 20-8 score. Ashland with perhaps their last chance to get back into the game. As Allison calls it the war package. And do we have a fumble here? It looks like at least a stop for no gain. And we do! A fumble recovered by the Hillers. A fumble recovered by Hopkinton. The Hillers take the win 20 to eight in the JV matchup. Hillers swimming and dive was also in action this past Monday night. 
As they posted results for their virtual meet with Framingham, here's a look. strong over yeah. in uh, lane six. Connor had a great meet the last meet he, too. He really he did. did. And Ishii looks really good. Ishii looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And now she's a, she's a junior, right? Ishii is a junior yeah. and then Katie's a freshman. So yeah, I think good Katie's job, Katie. really... Uh, yeah. Katie's going to be on this team for years. Yeah. I think it's great. There's a lot of really strong freshmen. I know I repeat that every week. But it's really impressive to see and it's great for the longevity of the team and the depth of the team. Yep. Yeah. Results will be released later this week. Heading into Monday night, boys swimming has three wins and one loss, while the girls team is a perfect 4-0. and oh. The Hillers and Westwood celebrated Dig Pink Night to raise money to fight breast cancer as they hit the courts this past Tuesday night. The first set went back and forth. Steve Sweetapple on the call. McKim... Try to close this set out. Boys. Bump set. Caden. Nope. And that's it. Westwood takes the first set. 25 to 23. Westwood takes the first set 25 to 23. In the second set, the Hillers got some momentum going. Kim, Mirabella, Sam, Kate. We're going back to McKim. Kate with a block. Oh, just pushed it wide. It was a tip, though. There's Kate. Two hops. And so Hopkinton takes the second set, 25 to 19. Hopkinton takes the second set, 25 to 19. In the third set, it was all Hillers. Back to serve. Or, um, yep. Bub gets it back, and that's it. Bub closes out the third set. Hopkinton takes that 25 to 12. Hopkinton takes the set 25 to 12 and goes up two to one. In the fourth set, the Hillers go on a big run towards the end. And Bub gets it back underway. Doherty once again goes to Haley and blocked again. There's Mirabella with the block. Hannah, Rachel, Pellucci. Oh, great swing from Pellucci, and that's it. Great way to end the match on a fantastic hit from Mirabella. So Hopkinton wins the four set 25 to 20 for a three set to one victory over Westwood. Hopkinton ends the fourth set and takes it 25 to 20 to capture the three to one victory over Westwood. The Hillers are now 6-1 and one overall on the season. Taking a look at upcoming Hopkinton Hillers sports that you can catch on our HKM Ed channel as well as our YouTube page. On Saturday, April 3rd at 1 p.m., we have our first Hiller Varsity football game of the season as they take on Medfield. On Monday, April 5th at 4.30 p.m., Hillers JV football battles Brockton. On Tuesday, April 6th, Hiller Girls Volleyball will have the JV2 matchup at 3.30 p.m., JV1 at 4.45 p.m., Varsity at 6 p.m. And then on Thursday, April 8th at 3.30 p.m., Hiller's Unified Basketball vs. Bellingham. Some upcoming events in town. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts presents Beyond the studio, the 2021 HCA Teacher Show. The display will run March 26th through April 29th in the Lotvin Family Gallery. And also the Hopkinton Women's Club will be holding its monthly meeting this month on Monday, April 12th at 10 a.m. on Zoom. They invite everyone to join. 
Just contact the membership chair, Judith Weinthaler, and she will certainly be able to help you out. You can contact her at hopwcmembership at gmail.com. You can find all the information on our website, hcam.tv. And also, the Hopkinton Women's Club will continue its annual tradition of hosting the Candidates' Night on Wednesday, April 28th at 7 p.m. And the decision to hold the event in person or virtually will be made sometime very soon. Upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts include Art Around the World Brazil on April 10th, Theater Art Raise Your Voices on April 14th, Head over to hopartcenter.org to see all the latest and greatest upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. And also, the Marathon Fund Committee will be awarding 10 $1,000 scholarships to graduating high school seniors who are residents of Hopkinton. You can reach out to the Select Board Town Manager's Office in the Town Hall, the Guidance Department at Hopkinton High School, or on the town website, hopkintonma.gov, or give them a call, 508-497-9701. And also the Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition presents Bike for Prevention, running April 19th through the 25th. You can find all the information you need to know at www.mbcc.org slash bike. Our picture of the week, Hopkinton Hillers JV football defeated Ashland 20 to eight on the turf fields on a beautiful sunny day, a little windy, but great football weather nonetheless. Upcoming government meetings on Tuesday, April 6th at 6 p.m. You can catch the select board meeting live on HCAM TV. Also that night on our YouTube page and maybe partially on HCAM TV, you can catch the Conservation Commission. That meeting starts at 7 p.m. And also the town caucuses will be held next week. The Republican town caucus is on Wednesday, April 7th at 7 p.m. And the Democratic town caucus on Friday, April 9th at 6.30 p.m. You can find all the town government meeting information at hopkintonma.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. Don't worry, we'll be back next Thursday at 6.30 p.m. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. Take care, be well, and we'll talk to you again soon.